Welcome back. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to take a good selfie or a good photo of yourself. These rules can be applied to general photography as well, but today it will be specifically about selfies. So I'm about to head out and do a little bit of shopping. I haven't had much downtime of late. I've been swamped with exams and study and life and moving house and I'm in between places at the moment, so it's all really crazy. So I'm just kind of a bit of a wander around today. I don't have a lot of time, but I'm gonna just soak up what I do have and yeah, see what's out in a couple of stores. I'm currently with my friend Nacho. Hi Nacho. <laughs> He's been very, very, very friendly and won't leave me alone, <laughs> which I don't mind because I do love the attention of the sea. Little baby. Um, okay, so we'll be back and stay tuned. break it was really good just to have some time out life's been nuts so I wanted to talk today about taking a good photo of yourself so it's something that can be a little bit daunting to start with especially if you haven't done much photography or modeling it can be a bit scary and you know you don't want to come off as looking narcissistic or anything like that but taking photos of yourself does have its place especially now with our modern day social media apps and things like that things require photographs all the time so you want to be making sure that you have a solid profile especially if you've got a business and things like that sometimes you can't always afford regular updates with professional photography so it does help to do your own photography every now and then it does have its place so I guess my main tips today that I would give in just I mean it takes practice so that's probably like the main thing I guess but the main two things that you really want to be mindful of when taking photos of yourself is lighting and angles so lighting is the first one you want to be making sure that you have adequate lighting for your shot so um I will go through in a little bit just a couple of videos of some of the lighting and things that I use so obviously if you're indoors um, you can use the lights in your house using windows is a really good one for natural soft lighting as well um, you can get the soft boxes I've got one that I've, I'll show you in the video it was just one that I got from eBay it wasn't overly expensive you can do it quite easily as well photographers now have little um, makeup artists so I think a few of us use them now as well the little ring lights as well that you can attach to your phone or camera or put it on a stand or whatever so there's those options as well but at the end of the day the main point to that is lighting you just want good lighting that so the softbox provides a really nice directional light obviously you can experiment with angles if you want it to the side if you want certain shadows on the opposite side or if you want it straight on it just depends on what you're after but practice experiment is really the only way that you're going to get what you what you're aiming for and the other one is angles so obviously with selfies angles are important trying to get the right angles can be tricky <laughs> um, we all have different angles we can work with so we often also favor one side of our face more than the other I know my face is slightly asymmetrical so straight on sometimes I don't love and you'll find most people are the same most people are not symmetrical yay but that's part of the fun and creativity of it all I actually have two very different sides that give very different looks in photos and some people may not notice it but I do know that photographers do and um, agencies do and I do as well so um, 
and I often change my part line as well depending on what I'm wanting to do with it. So these are all things to consider. So experiment, is there one side of your face you prefer to the other? Is there one side that suits certain looks better than the other? It's just all practice really. And something I do as well is I take advantage of your phone or camera's timer as well. So often on a lot of the smartphones now, this is one way I take a lot of my own photos is they have either voice recognition or sensor movement sensors as well so they can pick up as to whether you're wanting to take the photo. So often what I do is sit up my phone on a stand or whatever. I've got a magnetic magnetic case in it so in the back I can actually stick it onto anything that um, obviously is metal which works really well too so it means it's completely hands-free and if I want to take the photo I can just say smile or capture and my phone will automatically take the photo. You can do it without the timer on as well but I like to add the timer as well just give me a little bit more posing time. So often, even if it's just two seconds, it just gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, the other thing I use is I put my hand up and my phone recognizes my hand and it takes the photo, which is pretty nifty. I think iPhone has something similar and um, so just look in the instructions or look through your camera settings and things and see what you can experiment with. Um, and then of course with DSLRs and other cameras, you can just set the timer and getting the focus can be a little bit tricky on that, but I might leave that for another video. With smartphones, they pretty much do the self or uh, autofocus, so that's handy. Um, angles, you just experiment with your own angles as well, with your body, what suits your body type, what's the most flattering. Often directly front on is not the most flattering. And it's not even just to do with the asymmetrical face or anything like that. It's just, it, it, it accentuates, particularly as a female, I mean, as a, as a man, it's different as well, but depends on the look you're going for. As a female, we've got curves, and to accentuate those curves, often using a slight angle will give you a better look. And a lot of my go-to poses will have a slight angle or a slight drop of one hip, and then it accentuates the waist, it accentuates the hips, all in the right ways, not the wrong ways. <laughs> Um, hands are really important as well in photographs. Obviously, if you're taking a close-up selfie, kind of like the angle I have now, hands, well, I've got one free. <laughs> They're not really going to be doing much, so that's different. But in full body shots or half body shots and things like that, hands are really important. So learn how to pose your hands as well. It's not just a matter of um, the face and even the body. Hands are really important, so whether it's, you know, my one of my um, known poses is you know the hand under the chin look it's very elegant especially for more vintage sort of shoots which is what i tend to specialize in um yeah so hands crossing hands over gently over your lap hands on hips one hand partially in the pocket there's different ways of doing it hand in hair hand on neck you know just experiment um, but just make sure you're, you're conscious of your hands and how they're looking in the photos as well because you'd be amazed by one wrong hand motion or posture it can throw the whole photo out which is a real bum particularly if the rest of your photos on point so hands um, feet obviously are important as well you don't really want to crop off any body parts that look weird which sounds funny <laughs> But you know what I mean? Um, make sure if you are taking a full body shot, it's a full body shot and you're not cropping off your feet because that also is a big no. Um, the rule of thirds tends to apply in photography, so work within the rule of thirds. So at the moment, if we're looking at the rule of thirds, there's like one third here, I'm in the middle third kind of ish, and then there's one third over there. You can also experiment. If I move over here, that means I'm in the one third and then the two other thirds are over there um, and that applies lengthwise and things as well so it's a bit of mass involved yay mass <laughs> i was telling someone the other day side note i'm a partial mathematician not a full one i consider myself more a grammatician <laughs> but i can math on occasion after a bit of warm-up but remembering thirds and the rule of thirds isn't that complicated hopefully so if you just keep that in mind that will help you just be more conscious as to how you're posing and what your posture is remember um well it depends on the look you're going for but remember to keep your chin up be confident in who you are embrace who you are and and reflect that in your pho photography and your photos 
Um, we're all different and we've all got different aspects of us that um, we love and other things we may not love as much but at the end of the day it's all about embracing who you are and just bringing that to life and there's one way to do that in photos is by just you know, being confident and accentuating what works with you and your body type and your features and things so experiment even if you feel a bit crazy and self-conscious just experiment it's the only way you're going to get through that and learn um, I used to be terrible when it came to taking photos and posing and modeling and the only way I really broke through that was to address my fear and and just do a lot of it <laughs> To this day, I still have moments where I feel a bit dorky, sometimes especially in public, if you've got a good photo moment going on and you take a quick selfie or, you know, you set your phone up on something and put it on timer. But you've just got to work through it because at the end of the day, you'll regret not having that photo more than the few moments of awkwardness. <laughs> so practice. Um, as I said, as part of my modeling journey, I, I've always been a bit of a geek. The thought of modeling was a bit weird. But I have had attention from modelling agencies and I have done modelling and I am internationally published and that was really through just practising selfies. And then of course that caught on with photographers and when I moved to Sydney last I did have people approach me in the street as well. But helping, what helped me with my posture and things was by doing um, selfies and just practising photos and also dancing. If you do that, that helps. Posture is a big one. Um, yeah, so you never know where it will take you. It may just be for fun. It may just be for just having a nice photo on your Facebook profile, whatever it is. Um, it, it doesn't hurt to practice. Take on these tips. So remember the main two are lighting and angles. And the rest, I've added some extra tips as well, but it's, it will come with practice. So thank you for watching. Um, Stay tuned for more. As I've said, my life is swamped right now. I'm trying to do as much as I can on here, but <laughs> I can't make too many promises at this point. Hopefully it will settle down soon. All right, so stay tuned. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this today. I appreciate it. My channel is still very young, so I appreciate all the support I can get. And let's see where this takes us. All right, bye.